Are you, have you worked on any apps yet, or? No. Are you, have you worked on? We do. We are alive. Ooh. Hooray! Mm -hmm. we... Well, hi. Well, hi. That's an older video too. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's like half older. Half older. Yeah, you got a little bit of crackle, Siv. But... All right, time to piss. Time to piss. Hello, fish man. Um, Hello. I'm I'm aggressively sleepy, so I'm just gonna be doing my best. So, oh no, I really. <sighs> oh, give me a second. Yeah, How's you're good, buddy. How is the investigation going, going Inspector? <laughs> Well, they do it, really. Very simple case, this. There's some very definitive evidence. We're just about to charge that diver we arrested last night, in fact. Gina, you're something. That's right. Should be able to bring her before the judge at the Bailey tomorrow. Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me. You sound... Fuck. You sound bad now. <laughs> yes, that's because I'm on my other mic now. Hold on a moment. Your ladyship, as as much as I would, I could oblige you, I'm afraid. Oh, just just do a little baby voice for me. I'm fixing this microphone. You've oh, already it... captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? <laughs> what the? And you're going to put them on the stand at witnesses, are you? How, how could you? How? How could you possibly know that? I had a feeling, that's all. Oh no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Remind me to try to never try to remind me. You. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you've already heard the two men who shot Mr. Sholmes, have you? Uh, well, yes, they were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade is being held at the prison? She should be. That's assuming she hasn't lifted the key from the jailer, of course. I'm making a tweet. Can you tell I'm us anything? Can you tell us anything about Mr. Sholmes? What's his condition? Sorry, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Scotland Yard matters are strictly confidential. Well, I know he's being operated on at St. Something. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's the hospital's policy, no visit it at all. Oh. The bullet must have hit an artery in his midriff. Oof. Ooh. He's lost a fair bit of blood. He's dead, my guy. <laughs> it's like 1880. He's dead. Yeah. He didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so. Really? But a hemorrhage like that is enough to make even one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is a human like the rest of us, you know. Well, anyway, he's having emergency surgery right now. They've got to get that bullet out. But he will be all right, won't he? They'll be able to make him better? Of course, your ladyship. Uh, he'll be as right as rain before you know it. Really? How do you know? Uh, how do I know? Well, um, uh, because, of course. Oh, yes, because Mr. Sholmes is such a great detective, that's why. We better pray the doctors have a better grasp of what's needed to make someone well again. Oh, dear. Please don't die, Hurley. I'll report to your ladyship the moment I hear he's out of the operation theater. Um, I couldn't help noticing, Inspector. What? Out with it, sunshine. Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and Iris. Watch the sauce, Sonny. I'm a <laughs> copper, and we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. You do treat us differently. <clears throat> 
It's because of those Adventures of Herlock Sholm stories, that's why. Oh. I crop up in them, don't I? Inspector Tobias Gregson. Oh, well, yes, because you're an acquaintance of Hervey's. What did you write about the Inspector, Iris? Hmm, I don't remember, really. It was one of Sholmes's lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders. Is how he put it. Oh, did I write that? And you know what that one line did for me, eh? The very next month, my payroll doubled. Doubled, I tell you. Ooh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all because everyone at the yard reads them. They read all the Herlock Sholm stories. They've even set up a fan club for me. Of course, that explains everything. It was around that time that you became such a toady to me. <laughs> Can you blame me? All it'd take is one bad word from you and Sholmes could change his tune about me. Gregson, no. The great detective will say he's getting quite overrated these day. These days. Think what would happen to my salary to that came out in print, eh? The whole thing gives me the willies. I can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost to worrying about it. That's not healthy. But that would never happen, Gregson. Imagine not getting a good night of sleep. I can't lie him. <laughs> What's that in your neck, Rianowski? <laughs> There's a blow dart. Oh. <laughs> There's a slug. <laughs> <laughs> Free in another dimension! Every month when the new Rance magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Here, have some of my tea to settle your nerves. Sip, sip. Glug, glug, glug. Glug, ah. Sip. ah, lovely. Very much. That it's really tar, hit the spot. Will. Tar? Tar. I'm Minnesotan. We say tar for like, <laughs> it's fine. That really I've, hit the spot. I'm Minnesotan. I think I know how to say tar since it's in our state's name. <laughs> yeah, I know what's up. Teetotal. Taha. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's something I was supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Norahodo. Yes, what is it? I've got an important message for you. I clean forgot about it until now. An important message? I wonder what it could be. Are you going to tell me what this important message is then, Inspector? Yeah, it's about that young lady who's normally by your side, your assistant. Dear Susie, is she alright? She's at the station, isn't he? Isn't she being questioned? Nope. Not anymore. She had to head off. Literally, she's been executed. <laughs> <laughs> head off? Where? To Lord Strongheart's office, of course. He summoned her. Uh, yes, of course. I'd forgotten about that. One of the whipstocks took her uh, there in yard carriage after we'd finished questioning her. But she asked us to tell you she didn't have the fare for the return journey and to go and meet her there. She's got a nerve using Scotland Yard as a blooming messaging system. I see. Well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. Why did Susie have to go to see the Lord Chief Justice? She didn't tell me, but I'd better ho head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office and fetch her straight away. All right. Off to prison. Mm. Not gonna look around at all? I think there's like 12 things we need to do. Uh. Oh, there it is. Behold. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> no matter how many times I come here, I always get the same sense of oppressiveness somehow. Do you think this place is oppressive? I think it's normal. How so? I mean, look at that suit of armor over there. You can't take that seriously, can you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. I have to imagine this is evil man. So, everything is clear with regard to tomorrow's arrangements, I trust. Probably Cesaro. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, he's huge. There they are. susato san and Lord Strongheart. I mean... She is like a 17-year-old Japanese girl in 18-whatever, so she's mm -hmm. probably not very tall. 
And Strongheart's a robot. Mm-hmm. I wonder what they're talking about. They both look very serious. Very good. There's nothing further to discuss. You may return to your lodgings. No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. Wait. What did he just say? You'll return to your homeland? Suzato-san! What was that all about? I just noticed I forgot to turn off Cookie Run in the background. I was wondering what this regal music was. <laughs> ah, Mr. Norohodo. Thank you for coming to collect your colleague. What's this all about? Why were you talking about Miss Suzato's return to her homeland and... and... Tomorrow? Yes, prom. Prom is tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> Well, years ago. But what about Ginny's trial? You mean... She's been formally charged now? Oh dear. There's a bug on the ground. You see it, don't you, Iris? Yes, it's quite small. That's Naruhodo. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Suzato, what's this all about? Oh, please don't concern yourself, Mr. Naruhodo. It's only me going back to Japan. Your life here can continue. That's because... not what I asked. What happened? Um, Why are you leaving? It's my father. He's fallen ill. Oh no! Professor Mikotoba. I'm Professor Mikotoba. If I may, I I think I was this guy. Yes, sorry. You must be the defendant, Ryanosuke Naruhodo, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. My name is Eugene Mikotoba. I'm a professor of forensic medicine at Yume University. I'm evil. <laughs> we received an international telegram from the Empire of Japan informing us of the news. Ten days ago. <laughs> That's almost twelve years ago. Father collapsed with the fever. The cause is apparently unknown. And it seems he grows weaker day by day. Uh I don't believe it. As you are aware, the voyage from here to your country's capital, Tokyo, takes some 50 days. I thought it would be prudent to hasten Miss Uzado's departure as much as possible. <laughs> yes. Well, he's gonna die of illness, disease in 10 days. Absolutely. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, you're not gonna get there in time, are you kidding me? Illness, disease! <laughs> Popcorn. Mm -hmm. I can't believe Nature this is, is popcorn. <laughs> I thought it was a bug. It, it can be both. So Gina has been charged? She'll have to appear in court. Yes, she was formally charged a few hours ago. And the date of the trial has already been set for tomorrow. No, not even 24 hours later. 24 Gina. hours, you say? <laughs> <laughs> Turns Gina. forward time, just a little bit of maneuvering. <laughs> Gina. Ah, the Lestrade girl in the murder at the Baker Street pawnbroker, yes? An all too transpicuous case. The pickpocket was clearly disturbed mid robbery and shot the man in a panic. No, the yard is overstretched as it is, without wasting time on these open and shut cases. It's not wasting time. Ginny would never do something like that. You're right, I take your word for it. Mr. Naruhodo. Uh, um, yes, Lord Strongheart? In defense of your fine services to date, I shall overlook this young girl's insolence. But I have no recollection of admitting a child into my office. Oh. Leave. Now. Uh, of course, Lord Strongheart. Meanie Bobini. Criminals will tell the most palpable lies in order to evade justice. The police can ill afford the time it takes to unravel all their untruths. Meanwhile, more crimes are perpetrated. We have far more serious matters with which to contend. Serious matters? Didn't Gregson mention something like that yesterday? Yes, Inspector Gregson made a similar remark yesterday. It's no concern of yours. Though I'm sure I need not remind you of that. Sorry, that was a long blink. <laughs> <laughs> 
three minutes precisely until my next meeting. You must excuse me. There's just one more thing, Lord Strongheart. Which is? It's Miss Lestrade's trial. I wonder if you might permit me to defend her. A timely suggestion. Sorry? The girl currently has no representation. But, but that's not fair. Yes, she may be a pickpocket, but she still deserves a fair trial. Do not misunderstand me, young lady. The government provides for those too poor to afford representation with a public defender. The accused need only sign the relevant paperwork, and a defense barrister will be assigned to the case. However, the young girl in question has refused that right. Why would she do that? A question you would do well to direct at Miss Lestrade. You'll find her at the local prison. Yes, thank you. Now then, it's time I was leaving. Good day to you. What a day. Gina charged with murder. Suzato-san about to leave. New video on Jello Apocalypse's channel, Why Fred is the Best Character in Scooby-Doo. Check it out. It's good. Check it out. <laughs> um, Mr. Narahodo, Iris, we must make haste. Thanks, Will. <laughs> <laughs> but, Susie, I haven't yet watched Jello's video on Why Fred Jones is the Best Character in Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <laughs> You're leaving for Japan tomorrow morning, aren't you? Don't you have packing to do? As Mr. Narahuro's judicial assistant, my personal circumstances are of no consequence. My sole purpose remains to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you, Miss Suzato. That's a very pensive look. I can be more pensive. Allow me to look at this bug. If I'm honest, this has completely thrown me off. I'll just have to do what I can as a lawyer. Don't you mean Doobie Scoo? Oh, Why shit. <laughs> oh, I screwed up that plug. I'm real sorry. What year war? I'm rotten here. Oh, they let her keep the jacket. Hello, Gina. They let her keep the gun! Oh, you still have the grenade launcher, Haley, and I made. I wish you wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. I don't want to buy so many people. Someone take Ginny back. I'll Ginny? I'll take her and see if it wakes me up. I have okay. a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were thinking that we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry. You would get lost. Don't be like that, Ginny. I know you didn't do it. You'd never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. <laughs> you think you know me? Pull the other one. You ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. That's how I get by. And if I saw me chance, I'd sneak into a pawn shop any day of the week. Just to see what I can lay me hands on. Get it? That's the kind of person I am. Harumph. What? What do you mean? I'll be in court tomorrow, they said. Some cove came by before and said he'd be a lawyer for me or the like. Said it was my right or something. But I told him to get stuffed. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need no one. Oh, Ginny! <laughs> she couldn't be staring at me more obviously if she tried. Why are you being like this, Ginny? Bitch. I'm your stare at you sadly. Ouch. That is one stern look Suzato-san is giving Gina. I don't understand, Gina. Why did you send the public defender away? They wanted me to sign some papers. Representation papers or something like that. It's all gonna be and rigged. I can't bloody fucking read, so it's not like I was gonna sign them. I said, what am I supposed to do with these if I can't read them? What me ass with it? Cover in shite? Don't think so. It's all gonna be rigged anyway, the whole trial. They'll pin it on me because I'm a kid. You're basically an adult as far as this time period is concerned. Uh -huh. She's milking it, man. She wants it. They'll, I'm still 17. I'm going to milk it while I got it. <laughs> They'll pin it I'm on me because... i baby. Cause <laughs> that's what grown-ups always do. 
Don't you hear how I'm doing this baby voice? Isn't that cockney? No, we all bones sounded like this and by the time we grow up we sound normal. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It's true, ain't it? Because that's how it's always been for me growing up in the back slums. My whole life. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, you'll get your mates dragged... What? Oh, okay. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, you'll get your mates dragged off by the coppers. Or worse. I've, happened, I've had it happen to me before and all. Been sold out and nearly snapped on the back of it. Have you ever been a rat catcher, though? That sounds quite entertaining. I'm a rat catcher every night. How you think I'll get my sustenance? Oops, scrolled the... Well, I forgot the scroll wheel does that, too. You can't trust no one, that's the point. As soon as you do, you're gone to grass. Dead. Gina, listen. If you like, in tomorrow's truck, Forget it! Jimmy! Don't you trust Reno? No, I don't. Look. I'll ask you nicely now. Just leave me alone. What okay, happened? I'm about, to su I'm about to Suzato slam this bitch. She just Suzato slams the bars out of the way. <laughs> now you listen to me. Will you tell us what I've happened, Gina? I've got 24 Gina? hours in this wretched island. <laughs> Last night at the pawnbrokers, there's nothing to tell. I figured it'd pay me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. But the old bloke walked in on me, and you know the rest. Well, why, Ginny? Why would you do that? Ain't it obvious? Place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling or two. Diving ain't easy, you know. It's a lot of work, and after time you don't get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? Oh, give it a rest! What would be the point anyway, huh? Nothing I could say could make a bit of difference. Please, tell us, Ginny. We'll believe you, whatever it is. Believe me? Don't be daft. You can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the time. And you know what? When it comes to liars, I'm the biggest of the lot. I've, I've told some unforgivable lies I have. What unforgivable lies? You're secretly noble, aren't you? I'm a stinky little noble. What did you mean before, Gina, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. They're going to want to question me now. Ginny, please. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give you this. Something to remember me by. You're secretly a kitty cat. That's right. We did the same oh. twist twice. <laughs> a photographic print of a really adorable cat. <laughs> I found it in one of the pockets of this coat. Ain't no point in me having it. I wonder what a little photograph like that was doing in a pocket of that overcoat. Dots. Anyway, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Jimmy. Gina, I wonder if you might hear me out. There's something I'd like to say. Look at this kitty cat. Wow. Oh. Look on the back of the- shut up, stop talking to her. Look on the back of this print here. There's something written on it. All right. 13th February, 9pm. Article deposited one small box. Loan about paid 10 shillings. Redemption deadline, 13th April, 9pm. So this photographic print is a redemption ticket. For an article that was deposited two days prior to the incident on the omnibus, it would seem. Yes, small box. That doesn't tell us much about it, does it? Perhaps it contains some valuable mementos. I can't help wondering. Presumably Mr. McGill did never redeem the article in question since he still had the ticket. So, isn't it possible that the box is still present somewhere in the shop? Uh, yes. If it's something Mr. McGill did deposited, we need to investigate. 
dropped popcorn, but I don't know where I dropped it. Oh, there it is. This is a little kitty cat. Okay. Meow, 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 meow. I love my kitty cat. What? Hold on, I need to kill this dog. What? Oh. I'm sorry to say that I must reluctantly bid you farewell. Uh, farewell? Tomorrow I must begin my journey back home to Japan. I fear we may never meet again. Uh, oh, right. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many lovely people here in London. I have so many wonderful memories. And you were there too. <laughs> and yet, as things stand now, this is going to be one of my last ones, and this really fucking sucks. <laughs> It'll be a good parting indeed. I didn't catch the last bit. Susie. Well, well, that ain't my business. Both Iris and Mr. Narahodo believe you to be innocent, Gina. They've put their faith in you. But somehow, you can't find it in your heart to put your faith in them. Yeah, that's right, I can't. What of it? It grieves me greatly to have to say goodbye to my friends when they are so clearly unhappy. Because of you. Uh, what? It's my fault? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I have fun. one final request, Gina, before our paths never cross again. Right here and now. I want you to show both of them that you don't deserve the faith they've invested in you. I? Only by doing that will you truly be as alone as you claim to be. What are you talking about? What do you expect me to do, huh? You've told us that everyone lies. So prove it by admitting one of your own untruths. What about what you said before, Ginny? You said something about unforgivable lies. You must tell Mr. Narahodo and Iris the truth now. That is my last request before I leave. My last request is a judicial assistant. No, oh, I can't. Whatever these lies are, they're obviously wearing, weighing heavy, heavy. Gina, I could be wrong, but is it something to do with what happened two months ago? Something about that trial? Remember me, you little fox! The one in which Magnus McGilded was acquitted. Uh, the case of that mysterious murder that took place inside the omnibus. You were called as a witness by the prosecution. Is that what this is about? Yeah, you're right. Because in that trial, I lied. I lied like you wouldn't believe. Will you tell us about it now? Yes, and that was a lie. Goodbye. <laughs> like you said, it all happened two months ago. The coppers got hold of me and shoved me in the witness stand. And based on your testimony, Mr. McGilded was declared innocent. Yeah, well, the thing is, I lied about a whole bunch of stuff. I knew it. I'm sorry, popcorn. I was hiding under the seat that night. That was the truth. Hang on, turning up the volume a little. It was pe shit. Fuck. <laughs> it was pitch black in that little cubby hole. Couldn't Could see anything. And then... I heard that loud thud. Like someone falling on the floor. And that's when Mr. McGill did discovered you. Yeah. He pulled me out from under the seat and sat me next to the dead man. There weren't much light to see by, but when I looked at my hands, I had the cove's blood all over them. I was so scared. I couldn't even speak. You had his blood on your hands. In other words, it was Gina that the witnesses on the roof deck saw through the skylight. Then Mr. McGill did um, start... Oh, sorry. Mr. McGill did ask, started asking you questions, I suppose. Who you were, and why you were hiding under the seat. Yeah, he did. Only, that's not all. What do you mean? I mean, he threatened me. Threatened you how? He made me swear. 
about what I'd seen and what I'd heard, and about what he was going to do after the cove was found dead. He made me swear I wouldn't tell no one about any of it. If I did that, he said he'd let me scarp over before the cops showed up. Gina, you must tell me what he swore you to secrecy about. What you saw, what you heard, everything. No. Oh, God. <laughs> you said Mr. McGilded made you swear not to tell anybody what you saw, but you were in the pitch black compartment under the seat the whole time, weren't you? Yeah, but I got my x-ray vision on account of these X's on my buttons. That's, these ain't buttons, these are X's. <laughs> Yes, was Mr. McGilded sitting above your head, if I remember correctly? <laughs> no, joke's too stupid to make. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true, but... Uh, it was when I heard the thud of the cove hitting the floor. I let out a little scream, see? Couldn't help it. Miss McGilded heard that and dragged me out by the arm. And that's when I saw it. It was on the floor next to the old geezer what had been stabbed. A disc, all bright and shiny. A disc? Do you mean... Yeah, that's it. One of them discs. <laughs> so mm. the music box disc was there on the floor of the omnibus. Not for long. Mr. McGill did spotted it right away. He picked up the... He picked it up smartish and stuffed it inside his pocket. So that disc was in the omnibus two months ago at the scene of Mr. Mason's murder. And the bog rodder told me I weren't to mutter a word of it to no one. Because it was so dark under that seat in the cab, I was straining my ears the whole time. After a while, I heard the door and foot I heard the door and footsteps inside the cabin. Presumably, that was Mr. McGilded getting on board. No, not only him. Oh! Because I could definitely make out the footsteps of two people. In that case, it would seem likely that it was Mr. McGilded and the victim. Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. That means that two people must have gotten on, and then someone else must have been lying. The true mastermind the whole time was right under our noses. It was Beppo, the final oh, boss. The In his testimony during the trial, Mr. McGill did claim he slept during the carriage ride. But whenever I'm in a carriage, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness, and I always succumb to it. And your own testimony, Gina, supported his. There's no way Bogtrotter is an Irish slur. Otherwise, B Bruce Bogtrotter from Matilda wouldn't still have that name in 2015. Bullshit. I call bullshit on you, chat. You can take the rest of that if you want. Um, all I could hear was the Irishman snoring. Irishman is a swear for Irishman. <laughs> yeah, that weren't exactly true. Neither of them was asleep. I could hear them talking the whole time, in low voices. What? what? What were they talking about? Disparaging doesn't mean slur. Him? Nah. Also, I'm Irish, so I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so there. Is, is Irish literally grew up in a bog? Eh. <laughs> I have Irish friends, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. The sound of the horses and the wheels was too loud. But that still tells us something. <laughs> so at 116th on your mom's side. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGilded and the victim knew each other. I'm 75% Irish. I'm very Irish. So McGilded's... M yeah. So McGilded was lying, as I suspected. I'm friends with Shrek. I'm allowed to say the B word. <laughs> I knew it weren't going to take long before someone raised the alarm that the, that the bloke had been killed. Yes, you were quite right. The other passengers on the roof deck noticed very quickly. So when the cab came to a stop, McGill did tell me to hide back under the seat again. I climbed in and waited. The two coves from up top ran off to get the coppers. Um... Yes, um, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Right, and after they'd gone, Mr. Uh, I always want to say Mr. McGilded just because I see, like, the M and then the little C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's fair. McGilded asked the driver to do him a favor. A favor? For <laughs> Beppo. 
Now then, fella, what I need you to do... Oh, man, my favorite two characters to voice in one yeah. shot. <laughs> what I need you to do is take this coat of mine and deposit it with a nearby pawnbroker. And for your troubles, uh, let's see now. I, I'll give you ten guineas. Beppo! And Beppo <laughs> needed the money to get the bar. A, ne a nearby pawnbroker? You mean on Baker Street? Yep, you got it. It was Winderbanks. The coach he snapped up the money and ran off to pop it well, and ran off to pop this coat as fast as he could. Fuck, it's so hard to sight read this. <laughs> and there was no one left in the carriage. Oh, so then there was no one left in the carriage. Mr. McGill did open the box under the seat and let me get out of there, but not without conditions. I see. What were Mr. McGilded's conditions, then? For letting you go free, I mean. Not telling us so. Not for anything. About what I saw and what I heard. Oh. We're a little late now, bitch! Oh, those, yeah, those were the conditions. I thought she was saying, I'm not gonna tell you. And tell us something else as well. There's more. Yeah. This is the most, this is the most important thing, he said. And he pulled out a little bird with a hat. Meanwhile, in a late game, after sending yeah. the, after sending the coachman, oh, oh, man, this is rough. I'm I'm after sending the coachman on a little errand for me with some small change in his hand. Now then, did you hear what I asked of him? Did you see anything at all? At all? You asked him to go pop your weasel, right? Aye. The Fane's taken me overcoat to deposit with the pawnbroker hereabouts, and I want you, lass, to take the redemption ticket for it. Do you understand? What? Well, you want me to have the ticket? That's right. And I'll come uh, and I'll come fetch it from you later, sometime within the next two months. You're to hang on to it until then. Is that clear? And whatever you do, don't lose it. All right then. And in case I might happen to be delayed at all, you're to go to the pawn shop, Windebank, so it is, and ex and you're to extend the loan afore the two months is up. If you forget, the article will be forfeited, and any old fiend could come along and buy it. Uh, but oh, I ain't got that kind of brass. Here's five pounds. That should be enough. Do we understand each other, lass? Don't try anything funny now. If you go against me, yeah, I get it. Good. And one more thing. In a few days from now, you'll be visited by the police. I've no doubt. The coppers? Aye. They'll come asking you to take the stand in court to testify as a witness. So let's just have a wee chat about that, shall we? Uh, what it is... Uh, now, what it is that you might say... Oh, what it is that you might say... And what it is that you won't... That's a really good art style. Yeah, it looks nice. I love... McGilded's one of my favorite Ace Attorney villains, yeah. actually. Yeah, I really like him. Very entertaining. <laughs> After he'd gone over it all, I piked it. Got as far away from there as I could. He hid the pawnbroker's ticket in some bushes near the scene. I went to fetch it the next day once it got dark. So McGilded planned it and coerced Gina into giving false testimony. Remember, lass, Fred is the best character in Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're ready to string me up, eh? I lied. Nope, this is Irish now. <laughs> I lied. Uh -huh. And that big old courtroom I sold some corkers. <laughs> Thing is, I said it... Uh, man, it's so hard to go from Irish to Cockney. It's really fucking difficult. <laughs> Thing is... He said he would make it so he could uh so he couldn't live in the East End no more. That how do you do Cockney? Hello, governor. That's what he That's threatened what me. He there threatened he is. Me with. That's what he yeah. threatened me with. There it is. What a, a wicked man. <laughs> the East End is a slur, shut up. <laughs> he knew everything what went on in the back slums. He knew we had no one to look after us, and we was all just looking after uh, for each other, getting by together. So you mean Mr. McGilded would have... In an art beat, he could have had a lot of us chased out of there if he wanted. And then where would we have gone, eh? 
Nowhere, that's where. So, I didn't have no choice. Thank you, Gina, for telling us everything. But, I'm for it now, eh? Go on, admit it. You must be livid. Well, you can make amends by doing me a simple favor. A favor? What? Sign the representation papers for tomorrow's trial. Hey! If you don't actually want me to represent you in court, you can rip it up later. But we need that paperwork or we can't investigate. The police won't let us. Investigate what? The scene of Jesus, the girl. <laughs> the scene of the incident last night. Mr. Sholmes was shot, you see. You what? Ellie's having a big operation right now, Ginny. Is it bad? Is he gonna be alright? Sholmes is gonna be alright, right? That's why I want to investigate. For Mr. Sholmes' sake, as much as anything. Right. So what you're saying is, if I sign that bit of paper, everyone's happy. Is that it? Something like that. Miss Suzato? Yes, of course. I have the representation papers here. Ryu really is the gay friend. He's part of the girl crew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need no one to stick up for me, though. No lawyer or nothing. Poor oh, Ginny. She seems so lonely. Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Do, Lynx! Good luck, Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least this should mean we can investigate the scene at Winterbanks now. Yes. And perhaps we can come back to visit Jenny when we're done there? I don't want no one to visit me. I like being alone. I feel that we... <laughs> I feel like we finally cracked Gina. She's opened up to us at least. Egg. <laughs> yeah. And now I have her representation papers. No one else knows just what responsibility that is. Anyway, for now it means Inspector Gregson can't stop us investigating at Winderbanks. Oop. Sorry, someone was DMing me. Although something tells me he's not going to be happy about it. You what? <laughs> ah, Naruhodo, you found my Egyptian god cards. <laughs> you must represent Merrick Ishtar in prison. Do you mean in court? I do Whoa. not. <laughs> Did I stutter? One, 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 one. One, one, Stop. one, one, two. Stop. God, that fucked me up so bad the first time yeah, I saw it's that. losing my mind. Here we are. Well, here we are again at the scene here of the crime. The the crime. Tobias Gregson and his very nice hat. Now oh, to thank you. He's got a little book. It's hidden in the banner. <laughs> Actually, it's chocolate. Chum, chum. I will eat it right now. Doesn't go with fish and chips. <laughs> oh, that... wait, I lied. It's actually a book. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> <laughs> now to thrust these representation papers in Gregson's face and see what he makes of them. <laughs> Hello again, Inspector. Do you have a minute, please? No. What is it now? You should go home and get some rest. God, I so want to. <laughs> Here you are, Greg C. Here are the representation papers. Your ladyship! How? I don't believe it! How the devil did you get that stubborn little ragabush to sign that? Careful, Will. Stubborn is a slur. God, I is. thought you were going to say ragabash because I that's, don't know what that's that is. That's the joke. <laughs> don't scare me! I salute you! That is good work, that is. I oh, saw you was reading chat and looking for jokes. I can see you've been very busy here as well. How about some tea? I'm getting you drunk, don't tell anybody. It's a special blend designed to leave fatigue. That's just alcohol. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links! 
Ah, lovely. Well, let's see now. Yes. Yes! I hardly feel tired at all. I'm fit as a fiddle, your ladyship. Looks at the camera. <laughs> Would it be all right if we investigated the scene of the crime, then? Yes, please, go ahead. You know where it happened? Through the door behind the counter. Yes, the storeroom. That's where I discovered Mr. Winderbank and Gina. I could go for a couple right about now. Right, well, I'll be getting back to business then. Will you be investigating in the storeroom as well, Inspector? If I'm perfectly honest, we need to wrap this up before long. Can't afford to spend too much time on it. But there are so many articles to go through, it's taking forever. Even with the lads working round the clock. Which is a problem, because there's another case the Yard needs to investigate urgently. That must be what Miss, what Mr. Lord Strongheart, what Mr. Lord, Mrs. Esquire, Lord Grandfather, did, the Lord, the High Lord Grandfather meant by far more serious matters before. So what I'm saying is, don't get under my feet, Sunshine. <laughs> Jello and Sib in season two of Shadows House like to re like to charge reblog to cast. Re to cast. <laughs> Come then. Let us not waste a bit of... What is in that tea, dear? S see, look how good it's... we'd be at it. Yes, very good. So your tea, it's my book. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, oh. Every article. Ah, read Bobby. Jello. Not everybody can read as fast as you. I'm I'll, Bobby. I'll let you know if they're saying anything important. <laughs> do not make me live vicariously <laughs> through you. Oh, it's going to be the same guy. No, he's got a mustache. Different we are both things. ventriloquists, ventriloquists, ventriloquists. We are we both ventriloquists. We practice every day. I swing a bit more. I have a mustache. <laughs> One thing's true, we're both useless people. Behind that door, it is assumedly another pink room to match that door. It's the storeroom, isn't it? That's what Greg C said. Yes, and that's where I saw that dreadful scene last night, through the little window in the door. Oh, oh. Who could have seen he this coming? Like a, he looks like a pumpkin. Mr. Winderbank face down on the floor, with Gina beside him. As the accused's legal representative, you have the right to examine the scene, Mr. Narahodo. We must make a thorough investigation. Yes, of course, and we will. Behind that door, that's... that's the real scene of the crime. Goggles on! Flamethrower out! Don't worry, oh, there's a little heart in the middle, oh my goodness. How do I... Pokes her nose. Is it like a separate room? Yes, okay. Those goggles probably poke her nose, though. She's got a little nose. Oh. Why is there blood here? <laughs> Poor oh. Iris. She's clammed up completely. Iris is bound to find this difficult. After all, Mr. Winderbank's life was taken in this very room only last night. <laughs> I'm here too. Hello. Ah! You stepped on my it? foot! Ah, my <laughs> fucking foot! Uh, wait, Inspector! What is it now, Sunshine? You took one look at me and tried to run away. Where's the, the <laughs> Scotland Yard Inspector would run away from some jumped up little defense attorney, eh? Stop yelling! I just. Well. I've never seen a ladyship looking like that before, is the thing. I didn't know what to say there. So you weren't running away from me, you were running away from a ten-year-old girl. She makes me sad. I'm afraid this is all a little, little much for young Iris. But some gentle reassurance might go a long way, perhaps, Inspector? You no. seem like you have children, honestly. I would, I would not be surprised if you had, like, a son and a daughter, and hey. you're just a good family man. Oh no. Eat a corn. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 
Don't, um... Don't trouble yourself unduly, your ladyship. I mean, at least you're not dead, are you? Sims minus <laughs> indicator above her head. I don't think that went very well. Why? Look, I'm in the middle of an investigation here, Sunshine, and I told you not to get under my feet. His son Fish and his daughter Chips. All what? right, you get one point, DVD player. <laughs> and we have investigating to do ourselves. Yes, I'd like to hear more. Oh, hey. Actually, what do you want to say? Of what the socially inept inspector has to say. <laughs> and inquire into how Mr. Sholmes' operation is going. I don't fucking know. Hey, I'm kind of tired of talking to people. I want to look around. <laughs> It's just going to be more talking! Out of all the articles in this storeroom, this is the only thing that shows any sign of being ransacked. <gasps> oh, it's her fucking dictionary. Or, you know what I mean. That's, that's the books file that my manuscript is being kept in! Oh! Iris's unpublished story, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Surely that's not what all this... I what, I what, I what, I what? We must check inside that box at once. Yes. It's a pigeon with a small god her pants. What's up Fluffy! with her What's up with her feet? They're, they're like they're like floating. They're like Oh, yeah, they but, just didn't get the perspective right. <laughs> I mean, they didn't even try because they didn't want to bother no. with the models. I guess it's fine. It was there. Iris's story was there. <laughs> what would you rate Mr. Sholmes' condition on a scale from zero to Regenbach Falls? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> really? <coughs> it was. Well, that's good news, isn't it, Iris? Um, yes. I, I mean, of course I believed Hurley when he said he deposited it here, but still, it's a relief to actually see it. Really? Because something... Because it's not, that's not a very well hidden frown. Well, let's oh, read this! Oh, it's... record! Oh, the little flower in the little heart. The Hound of the Baskervilles. How did Suzato san know the exact title of this unpublished story? Don't. I suppose I'll just have to re Schwarzer it. I'm so sorry. That's a lot of fucking pepper. If there's just, just tilt it for me, Suzato. Collectively. Uh, yeah. That's a big story. Not that bad. Gun. This is a phone. A real one. Uh, ring, ring, hello! And quite, quite possibly the murder weapon used to take Mr. Winterbent's life. Hey, you, it's a good thing those guys didn't shoot us with their phones, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> What's the matter, Susie? You and Bruno look like you're about to faint. Well, it's just that I've rarely seen a gun in the flesh. And I've had issues with guns in the past. But anyway, yeah, we saw... Yeah, things first. Silly, his guns aren't made of flesh, they're made of rock. Oh, can you imagine? Wait, what? <laughs> we saw Mr. Winterbank with this yesterday, didn't we? No, we don't need to well, flash back to this, that's fine. Allow me to call the police! police! Must be the same gun. And last night, when I looked through the spy hole in the door to the storeroom here, that was the same gun I saw in Gina's hand. Mr. Winterbank told us that he only ever had a single bullet loaded into his revolver, didn't he? Well, it's empty now. The one and only bullet he had in his gun has been fired. Logic! Where did the bullet go? So into we his huh? back. So we can be fairly certain that only a single shot was fired from this revolver. Ring, 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 ring. His phone gun. was only capable of one self. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> 
Look at all these articles <laughs> that have been deposited. The room is stuffed with them. I can't believe how many there are. A bicycle, a gramophone, musical instruments, even some enormous paintings. Look! Pieces of different people's lives quietly gathering dust in here together. There's something very peaceful about the atmosphere in here. Oops, I stepped in blood. Hmm. Um. Not much I can do about that sometime. Uh, what about that one drawer that's open above the, um, above the tent? Yeah. Nothing. Oh, oh this is all mm. Uh, can you investigate the gramophone at all? Nope. Okay. But, though that makes sense. The police have marked the position of the body with a chalk line. I love things drawn like that with, like, the only straight <coughs> lines. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Winderbank. He was such a nice old man. Hmm. Well, he was shot just once through the heart. Most likely, the fellow died instantly. He wouldn't have felt a thing. Yay. Aha! I didn't catch that! I may well be able to help with that. What? There's nothing like the sight of blood to get the blood pumping, is there, Runo? Uh, I have a feeling I'm not as bloody-minded as you, Iris. I'm afraid the sight of blood makes my blood run cold. There you have it, you see. When it comes to blood, we are all different types. Oh, are we gonna really do some blood magic shit here? <laughs> yes, what a scientific observation. Did someone say science? Shut the fuck up. So you need this. Oh no, what's the, what is this scary looking thing? Hmm, Herbie and I haven't actually come up with a name for it yet. But, as soon as you see it in action, you'll understand what it does. Shoots Gregson dead. My fish and chips, mine! Yum, 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 yum. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! The, it makes you rich. The color of the bloodstain <laughs> has changed. There! Does it make sense now? Someone chat, I made more blood appear! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I'm starting to understand. Good. It works on the principle that different people have different types of blood, you see. Yes! How wonderful! The chemical it fires combines with the blood and makes it change color. So, you can identify whose blood it is that you're looking at in a flash! Oh, what a fabulous invention, Iris! Isn't it? Isn't it? I bet Ginny would say it's bleeding great! So, oh, whose blood are we looking at then? I don't know! Uh, a blue man. This must be Mr. Winderbank's blood. Yes, this is where he was shot, so there can't be any question of that. There is science on the body! <laughs> there is science <laughs> on the body! <laughs> This could turn out to be a very valuable clue. So we simply must make a note of it. Okay. No, oh, sorry, I was reading chat once again. Let's keep testing and adding the results of any other blood analysis to the portfolio. I'm gonna go get my Oh, this is gonna be interesting. A game with blood types as part of the uh, character uh, portfolios and stuff. Thank you. As long as I ha Oh, he left. Let's say funny things about him while there he's not here. On the blood. <laughs> he's funny and nice blood and works signs. hard. Yeah. Oh, that is some. That is aggressively wet. Don't like he's that. also needs a napkin. This place makes the Dude. wettest burgers. Ew. This oh, is that wet a burger? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> How do you fucking get away with being so funny, you asshole? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <dear. laughs> All right. Saga sandwich! <laughs> Says Moose Goo. Jello! Oh. What? I thought you were clicking through new shit. No. Jello's a professional. Uh, does it have anything to do with the desk that's there? Hmm. Ooh, maybe the film reel things in the foreground huh? here? Mm, maybe, yeah. Everything is was... everything oh. is the exact same, um like wow, there's a lot so, of shit in here. Really? We're okay. looking for we're looking for a small box though that he was supposed to have hidden the um 
something in. Would it be the little curio box at the counter on the left there? I don't no. think so. I think I just need to talk to Gregson first. <clears throat> okay. So, Inspector, what do you make of the crime scene here? Pishaw! You've got eyes, haven't you? Use them! It is what it looks like. Nothing more, nothing less. Iris, could you lend me a hand? So, Gregsy, what do you make of the crime scene? Oh, yes, your ladyship. Do allow me to humbly explain. Hmm. Last night, at shortly after the hour of one o'clock in the morning, Scotland Yard police attended the scene. <laughs> The one and only door to this storeroom was found locked from the inside. So, it was locked from the inside. The lock appears to be broken now, though. Was that the police officers doing? Quite right, ma'am, quite right. We took the liberty of smashing the door as humbly as possible. We didn't even know there was a crime here. We just do that. <laughs> we just fun. do that since we're cops. A back and all that. All bobbies, you know. As you can see, the victim was discovered uh, prostrate on the floor, um, thus wise. And next to the <laughs> aforementioned body, we discovered the vile gutter child. <laughs> Are you talking about Ginny? She's my friend, you know, Inspector. <clears throat> Miss Lestrade, the hapless girl, was curled up on the floor, dead to the world. She's still alive, you know. Yes, when I saw her, she appeared to be unconscious. And I'm afraid to say, she had the gun that was used in her hand. No. Presumably, it's the gun that's still down there on the floor now. In her pocket, we found the key to the door as well. What? No, that was you. And what? you say the storeroom had been locked from the inside, Inspector? Was it actually? Oh yeah, shit. Yep. The key to this storeroom. Correct. All of which leaves her ladyship's friend. <laughs> his, of a his face. Mm, don't know about that one. I'm afraid. It seems you don't own an air fryer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have to invent one then. Obviously, my personal opinion is that it's some sort of misunderstanding. Of course it is, Inspector. Of course it is. Gregsy, do you know anything about Hurley? Is the operation finished? No, but he is. I mean... <laughs> is Hurley alright? Is he? Um, well, uh, the thing is, um... Don't mince your words, Inspector. Please. You, you don't mean to say that Miss Lushong's is... No, 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 no. The operation's done and dusted. It's just that, well... What? Yes, ma'am. They use something called a general anesthetic. It's the latest thing. Renders the whole body insensitive. The whole body anesthetized? Ana anesthetized? I actually don't know how to say that word at all. Is that even possible? Would it possible? be anesthetist? No idea. Mm, maybe. It's a it means, the opera <laughs> it means the operation can be completed while the patient is fast asleep. Goodness. In the Empire of Japan, we can just manage to provide laughing gas or for tooth extraction. The trouble is, the latest thing isn't always the greatest thing, if you follow my meaning. They couldn't get the medication to work at first, so it took hours for him to nod off, or so I hear. And now that the op's finished, they they can't get him to wake up, apparently. Oh my, that happened to me when I went in for surgery once. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows if it's the anesthetic still in his system, or if the bloke's just plain exhausted. Siv, I know this is me asking this, but do you have, like, any medical operation stories that are just like, I went in and there were no problems and it was fine? <laughs> Yeah, the last one I had, aside from the pizza incident after that, uh, you don't need to hear about that. Okay. But anyway, all they can do is stand back and watch until he comes round again. Honey. The moment he opens his eye, your ladyship, I swear I shall get the word to you. <laughs> what a surprise. 
Even in matters of life and death, Mr. Sholmes has to do things his way. Yeah, fuck that guy. Didn't hear from me, though. Strange. There's gotta be uh, something Apparently else. he can re-examine the blood. Oh. Oh. Oh, thank you, chat. Iris? Don't worry, I'm all right. But we must find the true culprit! It's me! Absolutely, I'm right here. I, I, oh, I oh. mean, oh, okay. I'm Suzoto! Um. Hmm. Maybe we need to, you know, there was some blood in the other room on the, uh, yeah. on the oh. calendar. <coughs> That's good thinking. Let's use the old noggin. No hints. No hints, please. Unless we like are actively fucking up. And asking. I, I admittedly don't tear. I I don't terribly care about hints uh, for investigation segments because I find them boring. But um. Sure. Uh, look here. But obviously no spoilers, oh, please. Fuck! Look at that shit. Woo! Oh yes, a bullet hole, and I can see the bullet is still lodged in the wall. Presumably, if that's Mr. Windham. the case. Oh. Yeah. Presumably, Mr. Winderbank wasn't practicing with his revolver in his spare time. Ah, well. Mr. Sholmes likes to practice in his drawing room whenever he can. He's very patriotic like that. Sorry? It's all there in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, you know. Isn't that right, Iris? Hell, he is dying! Uh, did I write something like that? Partly in jest, perhaps. In jest? Oh. Well, he doesn't do it often. It is quite dangerous of a pastime. He doesn't do it often. He shouldn't even do it once. Forget that for now, Runo. Let's examine this bullet. My god, the blood turned red. What's that around the bullet <laughs> hole? Is it blood, dude? No, dude, that's just a big mole. Fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, he saw a mole and squished it and just oof. A suspicious red stain on the calendar. Ah, uh, this is where I come in. Oh, right. If the blood changes to the same color as the sample from the storeroom, we'll know that it's Mr. Winderblank's blood. Winderbank's blood. Here we go then. No, no, not at me! <coughs> Puff. Such a good color. Whoa! Goosebump. Mm hmm. Ooh, free slime! It's completely different to the color that Mr. Winderbank's blood turned in the analysis. Well, we sure are lucky that whoever this person was uh, didn't have the same blood type as Mr. Winderbank. Yep. Just goes to show things don't always go according to plan, do they? It's really obvious when people in chat responding, Green Mole really got me. <laughs> 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 Nevertheless, we must add this sample to the test results. The father blood analysis. Green mole. <laughs> Green mole. I believe that's called a wart. Oh, what? No. Yeah. That guy is staring so intently at that bullet. Oh, that's helpful. Oh, I dig that. Okay. All right. There's probably at least one other thing we can find in yeah, this room. Yeah, definitely. Um. The I would say phonograph check. is missing. Yeah. I'm fairly sure this contraption was here yesterday as well. Here we are, though I'm not confident I can get it closed again. Oh, yes, that's a folding stereoscope. Really? This is a stereoscope? Mr. Sholmes showed us a picture yesterday that you were supposed to be able to see in three dimensions. You see every picture in three dimensions, Runo, you stupid git. <laughs> There's... <laughs> There's this um, there's this episode of Codename Kids Next Door, where Number One goes to Britain because his family is English, and he's trying to make contact with the the English branch of the kids next door, uh, and he thinks he has, and he's fighting some other people, and at the end of the episode, it turns out he got them switched, and he's actually accidentally been fighting the English kids next door, <laughs> and. 
And uh, one of them, like in the moment that the reveal is, he goes, no one can defeat the English kids next door. And uh, like a little boy dressed as a Bobby like blinks. He goes, we're the English kids next door, you stupid git. (laughs) (laughs) And it's so fucking funny. (laughs) So that big contraption over there. Ah, well, that's for use in public houses and places like that. It contains a carousel with all sorts of pictures inside. But this little thing is a much simpler design for use at home. It's got a little There's face. Special... Yes, it goes chum chum chum. <laughs> There's special <laughs> shops selling prints you can use in them. I have a little collection myself. I'm your new assistant when Susanna leaves. <laughs> I wonder if I could make money out of these in Japan. It would be keeping my toilet sparkling clean anyway. What? 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 I'm in the other room, but I can hear your brain. What? (laughs) I hate that sentence. (laughs) Stop thinking so loud. I'm busy. I have amnesia. I forgot your name. (laughs) Oh my god, Al, dude. You gotta be careful. You're gonna fall off the fucking bed, man. That's a music box. Do you have them from where you come from, you know? Yes, but I've never seen one as large as this in Japan. Oh, well, this will be a treat. Shall we have a listen? What do you think? Isn't it a pretty sound? It's a beautiful sound, yes, but it's a little hard to enjoy when all the policemen in the room are giving you fierce looks. Yeah, turn it up! (laughs) Never mind that. If any of them say anything, I'll tell Gregsy to have a word. Iris Wilson, Superintendent of Scotland Yard. Yeah, no kidding. Sassy gay friend. Ooh, there was something you, else you could click up there. Uh, up left what? a little bit, not his ass. No, no. no. There. Plates. These shelves are where the pawnbroker puts articles that have been forfeited on display for customers to buy. Yes, it's really, it's a really strange miscellany, isn't it? I assume that's how you say that. Yep. I mean, <laughs> miscellany. Ain't that the bitch with the salt and pepper diner stand-up routine? <laughs> I mean, huh? who would buy this horse statue, for example? Well, some people are very stupid. <laughs> well, sometimes you can find some real tra- treasures among all the junk you know. Treasure? Some real treasures? <laughs> <laughs> are you all right, Runo? <laughs> oh, it's just... Well, it looks like a collection of useless junk as a whole, but when you pick out individual things, you can't help wishing you own them. Even that horse statue. That's exactly how the pawnbroker works. They're very clever. Not clever enough, apparently. This is that strange contraption that lets you see pictures of things as if they're right in front of your eyes. They are. It makes It makes you think. <laughs> When Mr. Sholmes gleefully showed it to us yesterday, we were blissfully unaware that any of this was about to happen. Okay. Is there something behind the dolls? Is there a little bag behind them? I can't click it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think maybe we can check around the, um... I can't believe the Scotland Yards went so far as to donate a cactus to this place. Oh. Shh, keep it down. Oh, sorry. There's a major clue just here. Just looking one inch away from this. I think there might be a clue here. Why, if you make too much noise, she's gonna leave. And she's a beautiful clue. (laughs) 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 Really? We must tell Dexy at once. Oh, oh, God, Will. Come up here, come up here. Look ahead just there. There's a whole, there's a whole flock of footprints. Careful. <laughs> we can... If you oh. spook them, they walk <laughs> off in a line. <laughs> we got to get downwind of him. <laughs> oh, my God. But as soon as I report it, that'll be it. We'll be stuck here even longer. Stuck here? What do you mean? I haven't been home in two days already. I need another constable to relieve me and take over my shift. Oh, they yeah. really have a tough time, the British police. That doesn't stop us investigating, though, does it? No, I suppose not. I'm fairly certain it was the calendar he was peering at. My goodness. Again? Green blood. 
It just seems Green blood. wrong, something. <laughs> Green fire! <laughs> Uh, there are all sorts of different colors, like green, and blue, and green blue, and purple, and green. <laughs> like I said, everyone's blood is different. It's like a one of those Homestar Runner bits where Strong Bad narrates over a children's book and draws all over it. Everyone's blood is different. No two <laughs> people are not on fire. <laughs> I wonder what color my blood would turn out. Actually, I don't want to know. What am I, a filthy home stuck? I wonder if we can do that, like, camera thing that takes a picture every 30 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. Because cause he, he always said that he would switch out the date at midnight yeah. exactly. So. Yeah. yeah. There's the uh, article ledger here and Mr. Winterbank's notes and, hmm? What's this? It looks as though someone has left a little photographic print behind. Oh, look at the kitty cat. Kitty kitty. Oh, kitty kitty kitty. Meow, meow, meow. Oh. Kitty kitty kitty. Kitty kitty kitty. Uh, 15th February, 10.30 p.m. Article deposited one gentleman's overcoat. Loan amount paid one pound. Redemption deadline, 15th of April, 10.30 p.m. Paid one pound in flesh. A gentleman's Talk. overcoat pawn for a pound. Clearly, it was a very fine coat. In fact, I think... Yes, this must be the ticket for the overcoat that Ginny redeemed yesterday. And is still wearing, which belonged to McGilded. I would have never expected the redemption ticket to be handwritten on the back of a photograph, though. It seems Mr. Winderbank just used whatever piece of paper he happened to have on hand. Meow, 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 meow. But this photograph of a cat looks very familiar, doesn't it? I'm sure I've seen this exact same picture somewhere else recently. Oh, yes, you're right. Very recently. It's the same as the one Jimmy gave us earlier. Of course! Oh my god. Was he using the camera instead? Of a security device is using it to take pictures of kitty cats. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for then, Mr. Narihodo? Get it out! Alright, alright, let the cogs turn. Oh, they're looking slightly different directions. Yes, they are. No, they're not, Susato. They're slightly different. Maybe it's one of those 3D painting or picture things? Oh, yeah, you gotta line them up. <laughs> I've got it. These two photographs hide in a secret. A secret? What does she mean? It's the secret to killing dogs. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know Aaron was in the call. I'm always here. You must tell us, Iris, at once. Out with it. <laughs> Won't you hit me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you really, really, really want to know? Iris, Ginny is going to be executed. <laughs> Yes, we need you to tell us all about all you know about this pair of photographs. Oh shit, I should have said that out loud. Don't worry, I'll hide it. He wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Iris, about these two photographic prints. The one we found here on Mr. Winderbank's counter and the Gregson, one Gina gave us before. You cannot, you cannot reveal to them your slug identity. Slug what are you talking about, Iris? <laughs> <clears throat> what is this amazing secret you mentioned that's hidden between these two identical prints? There's a man in the photo, points at the snowman. Hmm. If you look carefully, They're not! <laughs> yes! Have another look at them now. Guys, don't fucking say that word. Can you see that they're just slightly different from each other? I, I think so. It's very subtle, though. But what's the reason for the subtle difference between the two prints? They're two different photos, you git! <laughs> well, you see, it's just one cat moving very fast. <sighs> no, I don't. This pair of photographs... It's meant to be used in a stereoscope. 
everyone in London is raving about them at the moment. Ah, a stereoscope. Why do I feel as though I've heard that word recently? Oh, yes! The stereoscope! Oh, I hate these stereoscopes. Oh, we'll get a git pics. Green fire? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, wonderful. Then I'll be able to tell you. She's over the moon, bless her. <laughs> Should we let her explain, though? We really do need to carry on investigating the scene. I, for once, simply have to know. Have you ever considered, Runel? How our eyes see depth in the world around us? Well, I just open them. And it works. Fair but enough. The reason it works is because we have two eyes. Two eyes. Shocking. If you try closing just one eye at a time, I think I... you'll see straight away. I can't. What you see with your left eye, and what you see with your right eye. It's slightly different. You get a different view with each eye. Yes, the position of objects seems to shift slightly. Exactly. And in your head, your brain uses that shift to estimate depth as it merges the two views into one. That's how we can sense depth in everything we see. <sighs> My brain is really amazing, isn't it? It does so <laughs> much without telling me. Thank you, brain! Trust me, it tells me plenty. <laughs> I think I see. So the pair of photographs consist of a left eye view and a right eye view. Is that right? No, that's left. Oh, well done, Susie. You're so quick. So. But you, we you know, you uh, little slug about. My brain, that's a slur. If you can <laughs> pers persuade. I've read that as. If you can persuade your brain to merge <laughs> the two pictures together in your head you'd be able to see depth in these prints. Yes, Reno, you're beginning to understand. And a stereoscope's function is to act as your brain and allow you to do just that. Yes, but as long as you have two images, two eyes and one brain, you can actually do it yourself without needing a stereoscope at all. You can? Really? Yeah, Stop really. <laughs> what are you doing? Stop it. Let's try it. Let's see if you can view this pair of prints without the help of a stereoscope. Oh, yes! I'm dying to have a go! Suzato's son really loves this kind of thing. You need to be able to cross your eyes. That's the main thing. Can you both do that? Cross my eyes? I, I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me and see if you can copy. <laughs> <laughs> Make your eyes do this. Slaps her. Where? I guess it's this, right? Wait, did did I hit that by accident? I guess I must have. Some, what the fuck? Oh Where, yeah. Why did that pop up? I did not touch All the right. keyboard. All right. Let me try. Are you ready, Mr. Nyoto? <laughs> <laughs> there. The How's that? <laughs> <laughs> There goes Jello. Whenever Kay Faraday says anything, <laughs> she looks at you like this. <laughs> Wonderful. Now it's your turn, right now. Yeah, hang on. I really shouldn't screen cap this. Now it's your turn, Rina. The trick is to concentrate on looking at the bridge of your nose with both eyes at the same time. <laughs> Susano especially! <laughs> Matching icons for you and your friends. <laughs> Alright, that's enough practice. I have a little headache. Now, let's try looking at the prints. Start by staring at one print and slowly crossing your eyes. Whoa. Oh, Thanks, 3DS. Two overlapping images like this. Oh, I hate that. Okay. You try it now, Rina. I'm just gonna have to give it a try, I suppose. Did the print split into two images for you? Now, the next step is to put the pair of 
print side by side like this, and then try crossing your eyes again. The print should slowly merge together until... Now... They form a new single image in the center. Jello, crank up the 3D slider on your laptop, quick! so real oh i could look at it all day <laughs> you look like a clown yes yes I honk honk wouldn't it <laughs> punk. Punk. i say pop now okay i i can't i'm just not the right distance from my laptop to do this i can't do it because of my stigmatism <laughs> there you managed it so now you know how stereoscopic images work well, I don't know who discovered it, but it really is quite extraordinary. I'm going to put this on Twitter real quick. I'm going to get a drink real quick while you're doing that. Go get a sip while I do. Al, you're going to fall. A little sippy. A little cuppy sip. A little cuppy sip. It's good. They're certainly amazing, but it isn't easy to get the knack uh, to get the knack of viewing them properly. No, some people can't do it. That's why you do it, because it's tricky. Oh, I recognise that. We saw one over there and investigated it three times. If I remember correctly, you press this little knob here. I'm blind. <laughs> oh, that's the eye gouger machine. I think. I oh my god. <laughs> Wait a moment, I think I recognize this photograph of a cat. White cat? Well, London seems to agree with you. Stereoscopes are very popular at the moment. You can buy one of these folding contraptions in lots of households in the capital currently. But if these little machines are so affordable, surely there's no need to go around staring cross-eyed at pictures like you hate them. Oh, but someone in chat pointed out um, the VOD for Case yeah, 5 I know. Part 1 has not... Okay, just want to make sure. I've got another week. I've been busy. Yep. It's more satisfying to be able to see the effect with your own eyes. Well, I think so in any case. Stereostopic pictures. We've certainly learned about them. I wonder if I'll need this. Can you imagine how egregious it would be if that never came up again in this <laughs> case? <laughs> okay. Bum, bum. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. So, this is a cat. I've heard of these. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, there's two of them. And we're not able to examine the, the blood on the photo, huh? What about the smash um I think I, I smash might... plate on the ground. Nope. I might be able to um I might be able to look at it again. No, okay. Oh. Uh, um are you able to get access to the camera? Hmm, doesn't look like it. At I least don't not think it's left here. again. I don't think it's there anymore. Maybe the big reel up top? Real. That big round thing looks like a giant, like real. It's a pan. oh, that's a. Pot. That's like a big pan. That's a big old piss pot. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess I didn't click the blood on the photo. It's because they merged the cats into one thing. The ledger on the counter is enormous. Oh yep, 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 yep. Okay, yeah. So now we'll take a gander at that. Uh. That bloody. Ka chow! Mr. Narahodo, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's something rather troubling here. I have noticed. Yeah, I just. I understand it gives the player more agency if you can point out things that are like, you know, investigate the piece of evidence yourself, but. I don't mind it as much when it's like, here's a piece of paper with some notes on the back, like the first photo of the cat. But the second one we picked up, they looked at the note and the blood immediately. Like, I wish they just yeah. commented on it. 
like, like it is the, weird that they didn't just be all like, hey, what the fuck is that? I wonder if Cesaro son picked up on the blood. Blood. <laughs> Where where did Iris go? I just hanging out down the street, same old things we did last week. Okay. Uh. Okay. Oh, chat, you're right. It is a bloody and a fingy at the same time. <gasps> oh, can Holy I investigate fuck. this again? No, right. I f I forget that um. It these ones don't go away once you've investigated it. Are you able to, um... Look at the blood again? Why? No, it's a shame. Yeah. Are you able to look at the stamp? What stamp? Oh, this thing? Oh, that no. little... Red yeah. Stamp. No. Oh, guess not. So whenever I can investigate something, it's got this on it, not the main blue reticle. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Is she in the other room? It's a get out of investigate mode. Oh, right. I'm not used to that being a separate thing. I was like, where did she go? <laughs> His eyes are still crossed. Iris! <laughs> Bumping into the other policeman. Where are you? Oh, that looks like bloody. I would say it's from a gloved finger. Almost certainly a glove made of leather. Well, don't really we know. I'm gonna shoot it. Bang! It disintegrates. Whoa, oh. purple! Look at that. Yes, that's a color we haven't seen before, isn't it? We simply must add it to the portfolio of blood samples. It could be an important clue. Although, it would be nice to find out whose blood these different colors correspond to at some point. Well, this particular stain of blood... You've had an idea, haven't you? Good for you. I don't really think this is gonna happen, but do you think the um do you know whose blood this is? I I don't know. Um Oh, maybe Gina's or uh okay. Gina or Egbert. No you know who it might be? Okay, wait, hang on. I have to remember who had which thing. Oh, okay. the fucking um uh, thrice fired Mason, maybe? That's what I was maybe thinking. Uh, yeah, no, it's his blood because Gina's hands were covered in blood and she was uh -huh. holding onto yeah. it. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, oh. fuck. Oh, crap. No idea. Sorry. I got no idea. I have an idea, I say. I do, I do. <coughs> you first, I want to steal your answer. Thrice fired Mason? You don't sound very sure of yourself the way you trailed off there. Well, it was two months ago now, that case. And of course, I'd never met the victim, so I'm struggling to remember his name. He was definitely thrice fired, though. The victim of the Omnibus case? Yes, his name was indeed Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. But that would mean that this bloodstain was left on the ticket two months ago? Yes, I think it was. Gina two brought this ticket here to Winterbanks yesterday. I'm suggesting that the bloodstain was already on it at that time. So it's a smear of blood from the time that Mr. Mason was killed two months ago. Something else is coming back to me now. Mr. McGilded was also wearing leather gloves that night. Hello. Evil. Now I ask you, what good-hearted soul wouldn't rush to help a fella bleeding from his stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about my gloves now, was I? I was reaching out to give a man a hand. Evil. Hey! It certainly does look like a leather-gloved thumb... B thingy. I don't know. I couldn't convert it to this mark. A thummy. <laughs> You thummy! That's a slur! But we know that Mr. McGill had no injuries. It's a bad bet, keep going. From which we can conclude that any blood on the glove belonged to the victim, Mr. Mason. Yes! Sorry, I was 
Picking up a bag of peanuts! Minus the quirky slip-ups, I hope. Yes! I think you're right! What's going on in there? Is everyone all right? Very well. Let's make note of this. Very well. I will go along. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> That's gotta be everything, right? No! All right. Very well. I will go along with this. So this smear is blood. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, dog. Oh dear, is someone a little upset? <laughs> Sounds like someone's a little baby. I will fucking kill you. My blood is purple. That's why I died. Now present the evidence of jammy fingies. Um, okay. Iris, look! Evidence! It's, huh? really it's just a boring old thing, really. No thanks! I hate boring things! Iris, can I show you this? The way you can identify differences in people's blood like this is amazing. You really are a genius, Iris. I know, I am! If Haley and I put our minds to it, we could really shake up Britain's chemists and alchemists. I mean, you already have. And you could shake up Japan's lawyers and judges, couldn't you, Mr. Narahodo? Someone in chat said like, oh, this even tastes like blood. It might be blood. There's no way. And someone else says, how do you know what blood tastes like? Have you never had blood in your mouth before? Have you never lost a tooth? How do you not know what blood tastes like? Have you never been sad? Oh. For sure, what? even if I didn't intend to. <clears throat> oh, my manuscript. Mr. Sholmes said he deposited it at Winderbanks, and he had. But it's so strange. What is it about this particular story? I worked so hard on it. Why would Hurley say that I can't publish it? Because of the copper in it, it's iron, dude. <laughs> nah, never. I still have my baby teeth. Are you an infant? Oh my god, are you like 12? No, you'd have to be younger. I'm 12 with the oldest. Yeah, oldest is 12. Get out of here if you're a kid, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost as old as Iris. God. Oh, maybe, because I... Oh, maybe? It's because Hurley isn't in it enough. Maybe I didn't give him enough good lines. Yes, maybe. I wish I could say that definitely isn't the reason, but I can't. You legally can't be on this website unless you're 13 or over. There's no way that... that like that... Oh, ooh, big wall there to overcome. No one could possibly sneak in. Um, maybe I can present something to Gregson. Yeah, I just, I'm not really sure what to no. do. I'm gonna go get my tea. Hello. Okay. I got nothing to say to you, that's new. Alright, that's fair. <coughs> Sir, I found some bloodies. Don't talk to me. Right, 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 right. Ship? For a tip, on the move screen, there's a little directions on the bottom of a place has something to investigate or talk to still. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Uh... Where would that be? Hmm. You're in uh, the right spot now. Oh, okay. Something in here. All right. Mm -hmm. No. <sighs> no. 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 The tip is in the dialogue Iris is saying. What dialogue she's saying? 
I mean, whenever we're talking or looking at things, I think she rambles on about something. Something in the main room by the window I haven't examined. Uh, okay. Oh, in the move screen, she's saying something. We're back in the baby room. Oh. oh. Well. Okay. I'm not very helpful. Because you might miss what people say. I mean, I don't want to go through all the dialogue. You guys can just tell me what to do. I don't like investigation segments. <laughs> you need to present something to Gregson. Okay. Uh, uh, present the bloodless photo to Gregson. Okay. Why? Uh, Inspector, what do you make of this? Oh, what do we have here then? A redemption ticket for an article deposited here, is it? Looks like someone ran out of office stationery and wrote the ticket on whatever paper was on hand. Yeah, this is a ticket for McGilded's overcoat. One that little diver turned up the other day. Oh, actually, no, it's not. Really? Think you know better than me, do you? No, I, I didn't mean to. Uh, um. Shut the fuck up! Rina's right, Gregsy. It isn't the same ticket. Of course it isn't! Of course it isn't! I never doubted you, your ladyship. So, what's all this about then? If I might be so bold as ask. This is a second ticket. What? A second one? Hmm. Is that right? I think we need to discuss this further with the inspector, Mr. Narihodo. Oh, good, because he's ever so easy to talk to. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. This ticket was in one of the pockets of Mr. McGilded's overcoat. Uh, you, you mean to tell me? Yes! There was more than just the music box disc, it seems. Gross! <laughs> we should have insisted on the lads taking it back to the yard and examine it properly. Well, according to the details on this ticket, Mr. McGilty deposited another article here with Mr. Windebank. He deposited a yes. bullet into his heart. <laughs> yes, I can see it written here. A small box, was it? You have any idea where it is, Greg? See? Any idea at all? It's another article belonging to Mr. McGilded. It could be an important clue. Well, um, yes, um, I, I suppose it could be. Hmm. Uh, please, stop looking at me with those big turquoise eyes all full of hope and expectation. Don't look at me with them big old eyes. <laughs> big old eyes. <laughs> it's too much pressure. I'll lose me marbles. I will. I'll go bark and duck, duck. This is no <laughs> time for dog impressions, Inspector. Who, it appears you are the hound of the best bastard. That's enough, <laughs> that's enough sauce from you, sunshine. But you got so many fish and chips. <laughs> mm. there, was one yeah. there is one thing that springs to mind. According to this ticket, the redemption deadline's already passed, hasn't it? No. Oh, yes, of course. Articles are only held for two months. So, the small box will no longer be in here, then. What about the long box? <laughs> the one with Museum is news! <laughs> That's right. It's been forfeited. Which means it could be on the shelves in the front of the shop where the forfeited items are offered for sale. Yes, the shelves in the front. We must search them at once. You're wasting your time. Huh? There are dozens of little boxes out there. Hundreds, even. We can't possibly know which one might have been McGilded's. That information is not written in the ledger. This fucking le this guy's insane. This is a such a terrible way of management. Ugh. Well, I think we should at least have a look, just in case. Of course, your ladyship. Of course, very sensible of you. I'm sure. This is getting old. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. Wasn't talking to you. Dong, dong, the, dong. Oh, that's the play-by-play -play of what it sounds like in Runo's head all the time. <laughs> ah! I nearly jumped out of my skin. How 
could Mr. Winterbank set out such a wicked trap? I doubt he set out to scare anyone. Oh, is that really the time? I think perhaps we should pay Gina another visit soon. Oh, oh! Her trial is oh. tomorrow. We must establish whether or not you'll be defending her. Oh! Come back! I think we should ask her one more time. She may have changed her mind. Imagine if she didn't. Don't you remember, Renal? You told her she could rip up the representation papers if she didn't want you to be her lawyer. Give me a second, I'm getting a drink. Okay. Really? Did I say that? You did say that! Wow! I'm such a good guy! Uh... Oh. Oh, you be KB. Alright. He eats babies? Oh, I said OBKB. <laughs> Um, did I really say that? Yes, you did. The deadline for submitting the paperwork is fast approaching. In that case, we'd better hurry back to the prison and talk to Gina again. But maybe we should present more random shit to the inspector. She's been murdered! You just get there and Mr. McGilded's in the prison. Gotcha, boy -o. Oh, hey there, Boyo. Would you kindly get me out of here? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Gina. Good, you're back. You're back? Where did she go? From... She was being questioned. Oh, yeah. alright. The police must have finished questioning her then. I have I have a mento stuck to my tooth. I can't fucking get it off. <laughs> oh, how was it, Ginny? Was it all... Uh, oh, didn't bother me. Thank you for the papers you signed before. It meant we were able to investigate at Winterbanks. Oh, right. Don't you want to know how we've got on? We've been ever so busy. What's the point in asking? Won't change what everyone's saying. That I did it. Maybe they liked me more if I was a bit more friendly. It is a jury system. Mm-hmm. Gina. We came to ask for your final decision. Aye, what decision about tomorrow's trial? Will you let me defend you or not? <clears throat> I must submit the paperwork now if you'd like Mr. Narahoto to represent you. Right, I see. She's really lost her fight all of a sudden. But I know what that feels like. The worry is just so hard to bear. No! Pick my nose for me and then we'll see. <laughs> Oh, oh, right then. Blimey, give it a rest with them eyes, Iris. So, come on then, fill us in. Who done it? Unfortunately, we don't know that yet. <sighs> you don't say. We don't know yet, Gina. But Mr. Norohoro, and all of us, know that you are innocent of this crime. And while we haven't yet managed to work out who the real culprit is, there are a number of interest a number of interesting facts <laughs> that we have managed to establish. Ah, 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 ah. What are you doing? What the fuck are you I am about? nervous. This is my nervous tick. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Can you Bar Barra comes out, Dad. <laughs> Father. Father. Teach me how to <laughs> If I go out for a cigarette and leave you alone for 20 years, please, I hope it does not offend. Pray. <laughs> Pray, forgive. The discourtesy, that's it. Oh yeah? Like what? Shit clicked off the window. Well, for example, the reason you something... <laughs> the reason you'll be... Uh, you, you... I think I know now why you broke into yeah. Winterbanks. Bim, bum, bim. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to take some evidence that clearly reveals the reason and thrust it in Gina's face! Or I could present it to her calmly, I suppose. Show us a picture of a cat. This you? Do you see this? Oh yeah, that's me! 
Do you see it? Me, no, no. <laughs> Brit- no. British cat no. girls be like a no. <laughs> no I is hate it? that shit. If you, do you see this this pawnbroker's ticket, Gina? It's the one you took to Winterbang. He says, oh, wait, why am I doing this accent? I'm making fun of you. No. <laughs> the one for the child. A single fucking orange Mentos in this pack. I'm calling the police. That one for the black overcoat that you're wearing now. It's a little dirty. Uh, what, that? I don't know. They all look the same to me, those tickets. Surely not. Well, this one has a very obvious mark on it that would appear to be blood. Hi! Does that ring any bells? I don't know. It all looks the same to me. Blood! And they all sound the same to me, these answers. Suspicious. Oh, I guess I need to present the blood samples because that shows that she has a yeah, connection to the... Well, I figured... All right, it doesn't even... Nope. Okay. Ma, 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 ma. Here's a manuscript. Oh, well, she, she was trying to get this back for Iris. Yeah. I'm, oh. I'm stupid. The yeah. manuscript of Iris. Oh, I, when she said like, I know why you were there. I don't know why, but it's been a week. So I, I thought he meant like why you were there when we bumped into her that afternoon, not at night. And that's on me. No. The manuscript of Iris's latest story. Uh, oh, right. Well, that's good then. Curiously, the storeroom at Winderbank showed no sign of being ransacked for items of value or the like. With one exception. The box file that housed this manuscript. It was you, wasn't it, Gina? Who broke open the box containing this manuscript last night. Hi! I can't, I can't do that. Hi! Very convincingly. <laughs> you were determined to find out whether or not the Hound of the Baskervilles was really there. That's the reason you broke into the storeroom last night, isn't it? Uh, shit! Stop my fucking toe! Why don't you tell us what happened, please? All right, yeah, this Baskerville story. It's a latest Sholmes adventure, right? But it ain't been printed yet. So I figured it's got to be worth a few pair of piece, a fair few pieces of silver, right? Why are you lying? Oh yes. At least five thousand pounds. What? So you intended to sell Iris's manuscript, did you? No. Jimmy, how could you? What? Wait, no, hang on. Of course I weren't gonna sell it. All I wanted to do was find out if the mantle script or whatever you call it really was there or not. That's the only reason I was in the place. For Iris's sake. Isn't that right? Oh shit, my heart is showing! We knew why you'd done it from the start, Gina, you dumb broad. But... You dumb broad street. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't do anything mean like that, Jimmy! I just knew it! You fucking manuscript. You <laughs> man... You fucking mental script. <laughs> well, um, Ah, oh, yes. Um, this large individual. A positive mantle of the earth. <laughs> a monument. You, you fucking designated national park of a man. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw the manuscript in the storeroom, it reminded me of what you'd said the night before. I've been made it all. I did all. People always lie. It's not. Lady, 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 do. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did lie. Jimmy, that was so sweet of you. All right, all right. I'll tell you why I did it. Stop looking at me like that, Irish. Irish. Oh, we do you there? No. It weren't because of Iris. It's not why I did it. I just wanted to know the truth, that's all. You wanted to know if Mr. Sholmes was being honest. If he'd really deposited the manuscript at Winterbanks. Yeah. It's like I told you the night before. I never had a father, but Iris's lord ain't like mine. She's got a dad, only she can't see him, and I reckon that's got to be harder. That's why she writes her stories. They're about a dad, really. That's what it sounded like to me, anyway. 
last night when I was listening to what you were saying. Stories about Daddy? You mean, they're not the adventures of a great detective, so much as the adventures of a great detective and his trusty partner. Well, that's how I see it, yeah. You're so thoughtful and so kind, Ginny. Yes, and we never thought any differently, did we? Look, give it a rest, will you? I ate all this chummy nonsense. Yeah, I ate it. I ate all that chum. Terrible. <laughs> I don't need the manuscript. You what? I don't trust no one, all right? That's how I work. Because if you don't trust no one, no one can let you down. So leave me alone. Go on, Scarper. Scarper au fair. Hey, what the fuck is on your sleeves, girl? Is that the blood? They don't give us no toilet paper. <laughs> no, no, I think that's I think that's supposed to be the blood to prove that that was the coat that he wore on the night that he killed yeah. the guy. I hadn't noticed until now, but it's unmistakable. Right there on both sleeves of that overcoat are some very oh suspicious God. red stains. Look, the lock is shaped like a frog. <laughs> what? Why are you looking at me like that? I think it might be worth presenting some of our other findings in that area to Gina now. You mean like the thing I presented first to <laughs> her? All right. I'm not used to like having to back out to present stuff. It's interesting. Do you see this pawnbroker's ticket, Gina? It's the one you took to Winderbanks, isn't it? The one for that black overcoat you're wearing now. Uh, what, that? I don't know. Oh, is it going to be the same? Yeah, all right. Oi, that'd be. They're blood, aren't they? Not that I know whose blood yet. What? <laughs> Bloody Mr. Naruto! <gasps> you don't appear to have any obvious wounds yourself, though. So, could it be the blood that splattered from Mr. Winderbrank when he was, when he was shot last night? Oh, let's not beat around the bush here. I'm going to shoot you! This trusty friend of mine will get results much faster than anything else. Uh, uh, take it easy, Iris! No! Bang! Don't move, Jenny! <coughs> I'm going to shoot! Ah! Purple? They disappeared. Oh, oh! Yeah. My god, that black overcoat has orange stains all over it! Oh, oh my! Oh, no. Nani! Forget the sleeves, the whole coat is covered in blood! Of course! The black color of the fabric, guys, was masking the stains! I'm- this is not black, am I insane? It's- it's definitely- well, it's- it's supposed to be because the three D models all have a very consistent color coding going on, and they, it, I think it would have been really hard for them to get like black black on this. No, they've had people in black outfits, like the the fucking the the both of the dudes who were witnesses on top of the omnibus were wearing actual black. I mean, okay. Kazuma. Yeah. Okay. Naruhodo wears black. Yeah. And the blood is reacted with the chemical to turn a purple color. Like, th this design looks nice. I'm just wondering why they called it a black overcoat. It's very clearly, like, brown. Which matches one of the samples we've already collected perfectly. Yes, now let's see. Who had the purple blood? <gasps> Abe Lincoln! Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yes! Abe Lincoln! Is he even alive yet? When was Abe Lincoln alive? Uh, no, seriously, uh, I don't know. 18, like, probably like 1820-ish to 18. Oh, uh, yes, 56. he's been dead for a long time. Or 1865 was the end of the Civil War. It, uh, was it 55 or 65? Someone in chat help. <laughs> what, what are you all on about? The victim? What do you mean? I'm just oh. a purple bitch! It's a rather uncomfortable situation, Mr. Naruhodo, but I think this makes things quite clear. They look like they're about to beat me to death. We are going to beat you, death. It means the omnibus case is finally solved. The truth about who really murdered the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, is revealed. Oi, would someone explain what's going on? Stop telling half a story! You killed the brickmaker, Gina. What? 
Are you yeah. fucking daft? Truth of your lips. We can see now that the victim's blood is all over Mr. McGilded's coat. But in the trial two months ago, the defendant said this in his testimony. I'm oh, innocent! Hello! Oh, I ask you, so what good hurt at all wouldn't rush to help a fella bleeding from his stomach? Proof I'm oh, Irish. I wasn't about to start worrying about me gloves now, was I? I reached out to give the man a hand. Source, I'm Irish. <laughs> but if you look at this overcoat now, it's clear. It's black. These stains couldn't have arisen from Mr. McGilded trying to pull the victim to his feet. No. If that no. was really what had if happened. That's what would really happen? This is sh 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 beautiful boy. Sh <laughs> Susanna was speaking now. <laughs> no, if that was what re had really ha You know what, actually, take over, I'm done. <laughs> the only explanation for this pattern of blood is that it splattered all over Mr. McGilded's coat when he stabbed the victim in the stomach. Christ! Did he hit an artery? Just... <laughs> well, don't to... you know British people are water balloons? Oh. Oof. I've tried to run from the truth for long enough, but there's no escaping it now. I don't know what the context is for this, but in chat, Luke and Leighton are in the cell over. <laughs> just <laughs> them sitting on a little bench, like, scratching in the date on the wall. <laughs> for some reason, when I tried to picture them in prison, I pictured them doing that one clip of Tintin where it's like, Wait a minute, what's the date today? October 15th, if it matters. Then that means tomorrow's the 16th! Hooray! We're free! <laughs> <laughs> the true culprit in that case, Mr. Mason's killer, was Magnus McGilded. <laughs> he got you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that horrible case is solved at last, and I, I helped the man walk free from that trial. I kind of like that they're exploring that a defense attorney yeah. might be defending a guilty party. I used mm -hmm. all that twisted testimony and all that sham evidence to prove his innocence. How could I have let that happen? We well, know. Did you believe him, no? Did you believe that Mr. McGilded was innocent? I believed. Or rather, I think I was trying to believe. I wanted to. Because believing in those you represent in court is defense lawyer's greatest weapon. A weapon? Dogs. Before we came to Great Britain, a great friend of mine taught me a great lesson. You mean Kazuma-sama? It's not like I only have one friend. Listen, Ryanosuke. We lawyers are only human. We can't know for sure what is the truth and what is a lie. Which is why we must resort to our primary weapon. An unwavering belief in our clients. That's all we really have. Unwavering belief? Only when we truly believe what our clients tell us can we fight with everything we have for their cause. In any battle, there could be no victory without faith. So I believe you, unwaveringly. What's funny, Gina? Cool. Sounds like in this empire of Japan you come from, everyone must be soft. <laughs> well, come on. Look at the mess it's got you into, believing that bog trotter. Yes, <gasps> I inadvertently helped a murderer walk free. Well, at least you've learnt your lesson now, eh? Believing in people's never worth it. Someone always stabs you in the back in the end. As soon as you let down your guard, you've had it. Well, I mean, Mason was stabbed in the front. Take a leaf out of my book. You don't have anything in your book, you're poor. Believe no one, get hurt by no one. Gina, may I ask you something? What's your damage? What? I'd just like to make absolutely sure. What would you like us to do with the representation papers for tomorrow's trial? How many times do I have to say it? Rip them up and chuck them away. Are you really sure that's what you want? 
Sorry, I was clicking something. <laughs> about that, I bet that's what he wants and all now. Mr. I'm a, be I'm a believer, I couldn't leave her if I tried. Na -na 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 lawyer over it's, there. He's a Shrek song, you it's know. A Shrek song. <laughs> 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 It's not, it's from Shrek, or it was on the Shrek soundtrack. It's a Shrek song. <laughs> Don't forget it was me in that trial two months ago. I led everyone up the garden path, didn't I? And you're telling me you can believe in me after that? Not likely. Are you hearing this bitch? I am hearing this bitch. A lawyer's primary weapon is an unwavering belief in their bitch. Ultimately... <laughs> It comes down to whether or not I feel I can trust Gina after everything that's happened. Gina, let me say it again. Please allow me to represent you in tomorrow's trial. Uh, are you half baked? Not at all. You once admitted to committing the crime. Um, you once admitted to committing the crime, didn't you? What's more, I believe that you're telling me the truth. Seriously, um. Mr. Naru Oda, do you not know my name? <laughs> Didn't you hear all of what I said before? I'm a born liar. Fibs just trip off my tongue. And I'm a diver, don't forget. I pulled the wool over your eyes two months ago and I got you into all sorts of trouble. Why would you ever trust me now? I just don't get it. Sorry, there's a lot of noise going on above me and it's getting me a little frazzled. I do understand why you chose not to put your trust in others. But it's but annoying, we get it. Yeah, but I assure you, there is more to this life than you yet realize. Like other people! Like money, get some money. But, but don't you realize, there is more to this life that you haven't yet experienced. I, like what? Like the Mets, baby. You gotta love the Mets. Get a home run. Gotta love the Mets. Give me the home run. All about the Mets. <laughs> Here we go, baby. All about the Mets. There's something real fucked up about somebody with a British accent saying that. Love the Mets. What do you mean? Switch out. I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> the world we live in. In a world, it's full of people you would do very well to trust. People who won't ever let you down. I. I never give you up. <laughs> it's true. It, that's not a Shrek song. <laughs> it's true oh. that I'm just a student of law, and I'm certainly lacking in courtroom experience. But I can promise you this. Whatever happens, and until my very last breath, I am completely on your side. Ah, oh, my last breath! Oh. Someone, it's all about Man U. Go, Man U. <laughs> <laughs> Get a football. <laughs> Get a goal. Come on, baby. Get a goal. Come on, Man U. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. It still makes the bat home run sound. <laughs> what? what do you expect me to say to that? Oh, kiddo. God, you dumb. All right, we've wrung the tears out of her like a face cloth, and it's decided. I will take these papers now and carry out the necessary preparations for tomorrow's trial. Pray pardon the discourtesy, my lord, but there is something my learned friend has yet to realize. In our English court of the law, it's all about the Mets, baby. Go Mets, give us a home run. Love the Mets. <laughs> Ooh. I fucking love this meme. <laughs> When he puts his leg on the desk, it's him kicking the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I clicked off by accident. It would be a shame to throw them away now after it's been penned with your name so beautifully. Do what you like, you Eastern Lauder. <laughs> I don't know what you are. I don't get you. Come on then, oh, kick the puck. Crying. Kick the puck under the hoop. Keep it, the park out of the hoop. It's all about the Mets, my dear fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Gina's taken herself off to the back of her cell. She'd never admit it, but I hope she's feeling relieved. That turned out all right in the end, I think. One might even say a home run. <laughs> Love the Mets, baby. Whoever's hiding there, show yourself at once. Eavesdropping is the height of cowardice. Miss Suzato? 
Somebody is there in the shadows. I can sense it. Somebody who wasn't there before. What? Is this a Moriarty? Or is it... I don't think Moriarty's Oh. Well, probably uh, the inspector, right? Oh. Blimey, you're sharp, eh? It might be me. Oh, oh hello. I suppose you were using one of those mystic Japanese arts, like the art of stealth I've heard so much about. There's this... There's this joke I love in our trail streams where um, one of the two great powers in that setting is a uh, Calvard, which is kind of like China America, like it's it's like a fusion of uh, America's government system, but like it's got a lot of uh, like Southeast Asian flavor. And one of the characters in the first game shows up and he's got like strong martial arts powers and he can do like weird healing shit. And twice, one of the main characters is just like, this must be one of his, uh, those fabled Eastern breathing techniques I've heard about. I'm like, Joshua, what the fuck are you talking about? It's the most racist Dude, shit I've ever heard. So then literally anytime anyone from Calvard does anything, we're just like, ah, oh, another Eastern breathing technique. <laughs> Has baseball been invented yet? Yes. If anyone was being stealthy, it was you, Inspector. Or if it hasn't, it's about to take off. Oopsie. Oh dear me. Almost terribly sorry, your ladyship. I didn't mean to startle you. How long have you been listening in on our conversation? Good grief! Listening in? No, no, no! I just got word that there were some visitors who were refusing to leave even though it was after hours. I assure you, your ladyship, I only just arrived this very minute, not a moment earlier. One sec. It's all about the mess. Come on. <laughs> Haven't you heard about him, Horace? I'm, I'm in on the bit. Come on. Please. Uh, it's all about the the mats. Who are we talking about? That's all it is. Nothing untoward. Nothing at all. After oh, hours. Right. Here we go. Woo! It's family <laughs> 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 So then, I humbly excuse myself now, your ladyship. Ta ta, toodaloo, cheerio, all the best, bye bye the bye. That's a lot of farewells, and not one of them appropriate for her ladyship. But I wanted to have a chat. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but Tom is pressing at the minute. Oh, I see. That's a shame. If I don't get this emergency at the Supreme Court dealt with sharpish. Lord Strongheart will, well... Emergency? Lord Strongheart? Nothing! Forgot I said anything! Anyway, <clears throat> I'm off! Alright, Grixie, if you have to. But uh, let's chat soon. Delighted. Charmed. Can't wait, if you please. My pleasure. That's a lot of pleasantries, and not one of them sounded sincere. Whenever Ryonosuke gets, like, sassy, a little bit of Naven comes out. Hmm. <laughs> Grixie is so funny. He says such silly things. Love the Mets, baby. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Love the Mets. It's certainly entertaining to see an inspector of the police falling to a ten-year-old girl. But Love the chips. Anyway, <laughs> I wonder what this emergency is in the Supreme Court. Gina's gone. <laughs> I must attend the court clerk something something. Yes, of course. Thank you, Miss Suzato. Dots, goodbye. Tarty bye. Kindly escort I was home now, Mr. Narahoto. I shall meet you there later. Look at the frog! It's a little frog lock! Oh! Oh, I see. Okay. It's a little froggy. And so our investigation came to an end. Suzato-san went to file the necessary papers for my defense of Gina the following day. And then it hit me. Ah! <laughs> I could no longer <laughs> suppress the wretched feeling that had been gnawing away at my insides. Tomorrow, Suzato-san would be leaving leaving Britain and making her way back to Japan. Wait, why is your boat heading west? Japan is as far east as you can get. Well, you America. see- America. Well, you see, there's one stop I have to make because I have to see the Mets. Love the Mets, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Naruhoro-san. It's been a very trying day, hasn't it? I do hope you're not too exhausted. Don't talk to me, Suzato. What about you, Suzato-san? Today's been even more trying for you, I'm sure. Mr. Sholmes was shot before our eyes, Gina was arrested, all on the back of the news that her father has fallen ill, 
are you gonna tell her he's dead? And that she must re oh, Suzano's dad. She must return to Japan at once. I hope your father recovers soon. Thank you for your kind words. I wonder why it is that so many thoughts rage in my head like a storm, and yet I seem unable to find the words to express any of them. I know exactly what you mean. Anyway, I have one final task to complete as your judicial assistant. Once that is done, I shall make preparations for my departure tomorrow. One final task? Suzato, take death! <laughs> <laughs> If I throw you hard enough, oh, I'm back in Japan. You've landed in Japan with me. Wonderful. It's just two months since we've arrived in London, but we've managed to establish this office. It was finally feeling so we were settled in. I would be lying if I said I felt no regret. I'm so sorry, Suzato-san. It's just so sudden. I really don't know what to think. I've had no time to gather my thoughts. I know we've only been here a short time, but in my limited experience of the courtroom, I felt I've learned something. And what would that be? It seems to me there are many facets to people's personalities. Facets? And like a jewel, the light that plays uh, the light plays off of them in a complex God damn it. And like a jewel, the light plays off them in complex patterns, illuminating their actions and their motives. But we only see a small number of the total facets. When what is illuminated is only a part of the whole story. What lies in the shadows? What do those facets we cannot see look like? Perhaps there are some parts we'll never lay eyes on for as long as we live. That's so true. Sometimes I feel as though I'm blind to so much. But I keep hoping that one day it will all become clear. That all the facets will be illuminated. And I'll finally understand how everything fits together. I suppose what matters is that we keep our eyes open and keep moving forward, even if the way sometimes seems dark. It's amazing to think that it's been just two months. That's twelve years. Sorry? That's what? It's grown so much. Oh no, it was nothing. Unimportant. That was a really nice face from her. I kind of feel bad that I made the joke. <laughs> All the facets for the Mets. Go Mets, baby! <laughs> Do you know what time you'll leave London in the morning? In the morning? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, I ew. I should be at 4am. Good fucking God. I see. Well, I'll escort you to the station. Absolutely not. Sorry? I'm sure you realise why I couldn't possibly let you do that. No, be nice to me. You have a very important day ahead of you tomorrow. Gina's trial. Yes, I know, but... Every bird you utter will have potential to determine Gina's fate. Uh... You must get in as much rest as possible. Even though, like me, I'm sure you find it hard to sleep. But please, for me, do try. Um, you mentioned one final task a moment ago. What did you mean? Oh, why, I nearly forgot. Please, I want you to have this. Aw, what is that? Some huge bundle of documents. It's my notes from the case two months ago. The murder that was committed on the omnibus. Uh, um, a gilded case. It seems to me that this case of Mr. Winderbank's murder, of which Gina is accused, is very much tied up with that omnibus case in ways that are not yet completely apparent. So, I took the liberty of consolidating my writings about the case for you. With everything else she's had to think about, Suzato-san still managed to do this, and all neatly laid out for me in her beautiful handwriting. It was my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> this really will be the final task. I can only hope that it will bolster your case tomorrow for Gina. Thank you so much, Suzato-san. I will do my best to use it wisely. You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say, 
that I've been a complete failure. Sorry, I, I didn't quite catch what you said there. Oh, ignore me. I was just mumbling to myself. Love the Mets, baby. Love the Mets. Well, it's getting rather late. I think you should go to bed now, Narahoro-san. I must finish packing up my things in my room. Susato-san, I... I wish you the very best of luck tomorrow. Good night. Oh, wait, there's oh. something I need to... Ah! Hi! What? <laughs> what was that? A secret technique of mine, the Suzato Shutdown. Shutdown? Please, I implore you. If we have to voice our goodbyes, I won't be able to hold back my tears. Susato son. It truly had been a trying day. On our feet for hours. Getting Gina to open up to us, and learning the truth about that nemesis of a case. Physically and mentally, I was exhausted, and yet the idea of sleep seemed impossible. But I forced myself to close my eyes, and as a cacophony of scenes of our lives here in London played through my mind, eventually my fatigue triumphed, and I fell into a deep sleep. Love the Mets, baby. <laughs> it's all about the Mets. <laughs> How many times can we get this joke in in the last, like, hour, I wonder? It's probably you. Yes, I quite understand. That was a great weight off my mind. Oh, all right. Rest assured, I shall put everything in place, exactly as we've discussed. Thank you, sir. Oh. Okay. It has been an honor and a pleasure to be acquainted with you, Mr. Jones. On the contrary, the pleasure has been mine. I bid you farewell and Godspeed. I think he's talking to Cesaro. Yeah. Yes. My dear madam. Cesaro, what do you know? Oh. Godspeed to the Mets, my dear Matt. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna call no. stream there. Yeah, of course we didn't think yeah. he was dead. Duh. Fuck Sherlock Holmes. Uh, well, I don't know about Sherlock Shut Holmes. Shut but... your face! Be nice to me. I am! <laughs> I thought Whoa! you said you weren't Yam. I thought you said you weren't Yam. Raid <laughs> game. <laughs> Raid anyone but us. Raid Shadow Legends. Love the Mets, baby. Uh, All right. See you guys next week. Oh. In certain green stars that you would only be able to collect.